Oh, I changed. Oh, no. oh, shh. oh, I messed up this whole thing. Oh, no. I really gotta fix my mic. Okay, this one's gonna be really interesting too. I changed my shirt so it looks like I filmed on a different day. Joke's on you, I did it. Yeah, so this is going to be a video similar to the last one, but it's gonna be outlining more of my freelancing sort of start and also how I made the transition from part-time freelancing to full-time. So here's a little guide on how to explain the difference between full-time and part-time freelancing in a term. If you've ever heard of this one, it's called moonlighting. I'm gonna refer to part-time design work on the side of a nine to five job. I'm gonna call that moonlighting from now on. Full-time, I'm gonna call that freelancing from now on. So. Essentially, moonlighting is like, hey, I work at Taco Bell, I get off work at five or whenever I do, and I come home and then I actually like start working again for clients or individuals or my friends or whoever I'm working for. And uh, I, I basically freelance on the side as a side hustle. I started moonlighting like basically right out of college. I got really lucky and had a internship that sort of taught me how to freelance. Um, they put me on a program that basically is like Etsy for freelancing. Uh, if you've ever heard of Upwork, that's what I'm referring to. And this um, company put me on Upwork for an internship to kind of learn how to freelance and learn how to market myself and put myself out there and make a little money on the side. So I actually kind of got handed that sort of opportunity to pursue it via an internship. Basically that internship ends I start another job with another internship I had and I continued doing the moonlighting. I continued freelancing on the side and I charged like almost nothing and kind of built a little bit of a rapport on a couple online, you know, websites and had a couple of kind of cool clients. I had one that was an international client and I would actually get up at like 7 a.m meet with this client because they were in a different time zone then i would get breakfast and then go to work nine to five and then i'll get off work and then i'd come back and i'd actually do the work for the freelancing client that i had met with like 12 hours earlier or whatever really interesting uh i don't kind of remember how i made it through that but i loved doing it i didn't charge that much so i kind of got opportunities that someone might not if they're getting into it but like the gist of all of that is i charged like almost nothing for the sake of opportunity and experience and that's something that i think a lot of freelancers like have learned or need to learn is you can't just jump into freelancing and charge what your work is actually worth like it'd be really nice if that's the case and if you have connections maybe you can sometimes but nine times out of 10, if you have no rapport and this clearly is your side gig, nobody's gonna pay you full-time career freelance rates. And that's just the way it is. Okay, I'm recording. I did freelancing. Is this recording? Shoot. Is it? Ah, I just hit my back really hard. Wanted to make sure the camera was running. So where was I? Anyway, so I started freelancing, started building rapport. I would work a lot of nights and to me it was kind of worth it because it was fun. It was sort of an outside activity and it gave me an opportunity to hone my skills with different groups of people, different visual styles. So, so it's really important to make the distinction here. Moonlighting and full-time freelance. You kind of need that original sort of experience to jump to the full-time boat. It can be done, but for me, it was so valuable to make that jump. So now we're gonna kind of move ahead about a year and a half. So I've been moonlighting on and off for about a year and a half. And I decide after having shoulder surgery that I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to become a essentially freelance designer. I had a friend at the time that was kind of doing the same thing and we sort of started this little venture together. Uh, we have since parted ways. We're still like best friends, but 
he's doing something else and I'm kind of doing something else. But it started by me quitting my job, having basically no money and assuming that things were gonna work. But there's one important distinction to make there. I did have that sort of rapport sitting there waiting for me whenever I wanted to go full time. And a lot of those clients, I called back up and was like, hey, I'm full time now. If you need anything, let me know. So that really helped me a lot to make that transition. I didn't just start cold turkey and hope for the best. And that's really important. If I could give any advice to anyone, obviously it is to start by moonlighting or working part-time on your freelance gig, building your rapport, building your brand, understanding business. Business is the number one part of freelancing. I don't care what anybody says. I am not the most talented designer, far from it. But what has gotten me a relatively steady income so far is my ability to close deals and to meet people at their demands at a high value to them. That is what has gotten me thus far. That did not start by me just going for it with no real client base. And that's important to know. So I started my freelance gig and it was incredibly hard to start and I still took a lot of contracts at a pretty low rate. But as I continued to build my rapport, build my client trust and my client base, they started respecting me more and also being willing to pay higher prices or just give me bigger gigs. And that's something that any freelancer should pursue is a steady growth in their clients and their work. Everything else aside, the number one takeaway from my freelance journey is to surround yourself with people that believe in you. I don't care who it is, but if you have people that see how good you are at something and know you can do it and give you the faith and trust that you need, the encouragement that you need, you can succeed in anything you do, whether it's freelancing, being a professional Formula One driver, which is my sort of side hustle right now. In anything in life, surround yourself with people that believe in you and also surround yourself with people that want you to succeed and are not envious or jealous of what you do. They want you to do the best for you. And that's something that I am really thankful for because when I left my job, which kind of made no sense, I had a dream and people got behind me on that dream because they knew how passionate I was about it. And if you have people that are not believing in you and are doubting you, you need to remove those people from your life or you at least need to let them know that this is bothering you because having that stability is the sort of diving board that lets you go into these sort of crazy paths that don't make a ton of sense to the outsider. So for me, that's my important point from all of this is it doesn't matter how talented you are, doesn't matter how good of a business person you are, if you don't believe in yourself, you're not gonna get anywhere. And if you don't have people around you that believe in you, you're not gonna get anywhere either. So for me, those are my biggest like takeaways from this whole conversation. So yeah, that's my freelance journey. It's kind of a long one. It, it actually has been sort of abbreviated for this video, but I wanted to spare you some of the boring details, but I hope this is interesting for someone that's sort of considering taking the leap. And right now with everything that's going on, whether it's uh, staying home all the time or being in lockdown, like we all kind of had the opportunity to test things out. Some people have lost their jobs, blah, 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 blah. So maybe this, maybe this sort of hard season is sort of an open door for you to pursue something new. And that's how I would look at it and uh, go from there. So let me know what you guys think of these kinds of videos. Are they helpful? Uh, I don't know. I hope they're helpful because I like making them, but we'll see. So leave a like, whatever. If you don't, that's not going to kill me, but I really appreciate the support and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to end these things. This is video number three and I still don't know how to end it. So let me know in the comments how I should end the videos. I don't really know how. So nice.